Hello friends. So, in the previous modules, we have learnt about heat and work, systems and surroundings and also the first law of thermodynamics. So now, in this section, we are going to learn about the second law of thermodynamics. So let me just remind you that the first law of thermodynamics tells us about the amount of work, internal energy and heat. But the second law of thermodynamics is provided for the direction of the heat transfer and the direction of the work. So now let us start with some definitions that are required to study the second law of thermodynamics. Number one is source. So what is a source? A source is an object from where the heat energy is derived. That is, heat is transferred from the source. Number two is the sink. The sink is an object where heat is rejected. Now, after source and sink, let me tell you about the thermal energy reservoir. So, what is thermal energy reservoir? Remember, this is an important point from exam point of view. It comes in the MCQs. So, a thermal energy reservoir is defined as a large body of infinite heat capacity which is capable of absorbing or rejecting an unlimited quantity of heat without suffering appreciable changes in its thermodynamic coordinates. So let me write the definition for you. So as you can see, I have written the definition as a large body which is capable of absorbing or rejecting an unlimited quantity of heat without suffering appreciable changes in its thermodynamic coordinates. So this definition is very important from exam point of view and it is of thermal energy reservoir. So let me show you how to represent source and sink. If we draw a diagram like this with a temperature T1, so this is body 1 with temperature T1 and if we give an arrow going outside of it, so this will represent a source. Number two is we take a body of temperature T2. This is the body 2 with temperature T2 and we give an arrow coming towards it. So this becomes the sink. That is how we represent source and sink. So now we will see in a new page that the representation of the cyclic heat engine. In the previous page, I have already shown you how to represent source and sink. So now let us merge all those concepts and build a cyclic heat engine. Remember a heat engine is used to derive the heat from the source and deliver it to the sink. So the source must be at higher temperature from the sink. Now let us draw a source. Let us draw a 
let this be body 1 which we are considering as the source at temperature T1 let a heat that it is deriving or derived from it be Q1 let this be the machine that is working from where it is been rejected to a sink that is a temperature T2 and let this heat be Q2 which is given to the body 2 so this is our conceptual heat engine or specifically it is known as cyclic heat engine given the symbol like this it is known as C H E that is cyclic heat engine that I have written in the heading now the concept is that when the heat engine is working by deriving heat from the source this is the source and rejecting some of the heat to the sink it performs some amount of work it gives out some amount of work to the surrounding so we can write that T1 is greater than T2 to make this process possible and also Q2 plus W is equal to Q1 that is the total amount of heat rejected and the total amount of work done by the heat engine is equal to the total amount of heat taken from the source to perform this work. So these two can be called as thermal energy reservoir. And this one is also can be called as a thermal energy reservoir. Another thing is that here we, it can be represented as another reservoir that is known as mechanical energy reservoir. The work of the mechanical energy reservoir is just to store any form of energy or work done in the form of potential energy. Now after the cyclic heat engine concept let us see what is refrigerator and heat pump. We have to draw the same schematic diagram here to represent the refrigerator and the heat pump. And here we will draw the sink. The same as the cyclic heat engine but the difference is that a refrigerator or a heat pump sucks in heat from the this object at temperature T2 and gives the heat to the temperature T1 and making this area cooler. So this is heat pump or refrigerator. Here we need work supply. In the previous diagram we are giving work and in this diagram we need work to operate this way this is Q2 this is Q1 so what is the basic difference between the cyclic heat engine and the refrigerator and heat pump here the direction is opposite we are getting work and here we need to supply work so why I have written two other things two different things that is refrigerator and heat pump a refrigerator as you all know used to cool this object 
lower than the ambient temperature and a heat pump used to deliver heat to this object greater than the ambient temperature that is the basic difference between the working of a refrigerator and heat pump and i hope that you have all understood by this schematic diagram the difference between the heat engine and heat pump and refrigerator now the most important thing we must understand the efficiency and the equations of efficiency so in this page i will show you the difference between efficiency and coefficient of performance of refrigerator and heat pump fine so let us see what is the equation of efficiency so we all know that efficiency is denoted by the symbol eta that is equal to work output by heat supplied that is equal to q1 minus q2 by q1 from here if we separate this we get 1 minus q2 by q1 so this is the value of efficiency of a heat engine now let us go to coefficient of performance so in coefficient of performance we are going to take into account two separate equations that is coefficient of performance of refrigerator and coefficient of performance of heat pump so in the diagram i have shown you and i have told you that what is the function of refrigerator that it cools the body to with respect to ambient temperature and takes down the temperature of body to below the ambient temperature so here coefficient of performance is defined equal to desired work by work input so in both the cases coefficient of performance is defined as desired work by work input so now the difference arises when we take into account the equations here coefficient of performance of refrigerator will be equal to q2 by q1 minus q2 as for refrigerator the desired work is to cool the body to with respect to the ambient temperature and here the coefficient of performance for heat pump will be equal to q1 by q1 minus q2 so the difference lies here it is q2 and it is q1 because the work of heat pump is to heat up the body one with respect to the ambient temperature so from here we can get a relation between the coefficient of performance of refrigerator and the coefficient of performance of the heat pump by coefficient of performance of coefficient of performance of refrigerator plus 1 if we do this then we will get q2 by q1 minus q2 plus 1 that is equal to q2 plus q1 plus q2 sorry it will be minus q2 by q1 minus q2 so here we see q2 gets cancelled that is that becomes q1 by q1 
minus q2. Therefore, we reach to the conclusion that coefficient of performance of heat pump is equal to coefficient of performance of refrigerator plus 1. So this is an important conclusion from examination point of view. So with this we have come to an end of this video. So in this video we have learned the formula for efficiency of a heat engine and the formulas for the efficiency of the coefficient of performance of refrigerator and heat pump and the relation between these two. In the next video we are going to learn forward. Thank you.